a progressive, an incredible female progressive, has uh, won the Democratic primary for Idaho's governor. I don't know if you've heard of her, Paulette Jordan. She uh, spoke at the Women's March in uh, Vegas in January. Absolutely incredible, incredible woman. Ugh. Um, so I love this headline. Native American woman wins Democratic primary for Idaho's governor race. Yeah. So Paulette Jordan was a state senator or is a state senator, and she now has won the Democratic nomination for governor. Jordan is leading or led her Democratic opponent by around 20 percentage points. So Jordan is a progressive favorite, and uh, Idaho's Democratic establishment did not endorse her, of course. They endorsed businessman A.J. Bolokoff. So uh, not standing behind the progressive candidate, the establishment, right? Are we surprised? Absolutely not. And on top of it, they're behind a businessman. So Bolokoff ran for governor in 2014 and he lost. But here's the interesting thing. Bolokoff contributed to Mitt Romney's campaign in 20, uh, 2008 and 2012. No, 2014. Mitt Romney, Willard Mitt Romney, is a Republican at, who ran for president in 2012. So I don't know why he contributed to Mitt Romney's campaign other than he is a Republican in, in Democrats' clothes, which he is. But he lost. So that's great. Balakroff, uh, so Balakroff ran as a pro-business candidate. He ran a pro-business campaign while Jordan fo uh, focused on populist issues, issues for the people. Uh, she called out state Republicans and their ties to big business interests. Yes. Uh, so if she wins the general election in November, she would be the country's first ever governor from a Native American tribe. Uh, Hawaii has elected governors of Native American Hawaii descent, but Paulette Jordan would be the first governor from a Native American tribe uh, in the history of the United States. So that is progress. That is amazing and uh please go check her out check out any of her speeches whoo she's great so one of the big issues on her bill and why she feels that she really could have a shot at swaying some republicans because idaho is a huge republican state um they voted for trump uh by more than 30 percent uh, percentage points in 2016. It is hugely, deeply conservative. But one of the uh, things that she's running on and which she thinks will appeal uh, and progressive activists believe will appeal to even Republicans is for a Medicaid expansion. So that could help boost her chances in a red state upset for 2018. <sighs> That would be great. So she served in the Idaho House of Representatives from 2014 to 2018. Um, the Huffington Post, I love this, what they said about her. Jordan, uh, I don't know how to say her core, DLN. I, I was going to check out how to say this. Jordan, an enrolled member of the core DLN tribe. Sorry comes from thousands of years of intergenerational leadership in Idaho and the Pacific Northwest. Her grandfathers were chiefs. Her grandmothers were chiefs. Some of her ancestors were very prominent, like Chief Kamiakin of the Yakama Polis Nation. In 1855, when the territorial governor of Washington forced Kamiakin, 
to sign a treaty of land secessions, Kamakian later banded together with 14 tribes and waged a three-year war against the U.S. government. She said they could lead as chiefs and fight as warrior chiefs. She said about her grandmothers, of whom uh, her grandmothers who were tribal chairs. They taught me the way. So she comes from a long line of leaders and warriors. And that's exactly what we need, in my opinion, right now in this country. So what is her platform? Education for our future. And I love go to her website and check it out because she literally goes into detail about how she will make these campaign promises a reality. Her actual plan is laid out and it it makes all the sense in the world. Um, back to it. So education for our future. She says that her state's uh, education system is completely inadequate, which it is Idaho. She wants to improve the source of funding public schools has by eliminating avoidable cost to our state, such as expensive and unnecessary legal conflicts, costly contracts in House Idaho prisons and in other states, and tax loopholes for big corporations. We will have more money to direct to our state's students. Universal preschool, fair teacher pay, health care for all, Medicaid expansion. Uh, she wants to provide adequate funding for health care services. 62,000 Idahoans have been left in a coverage gap, so they don't qualify for Medicaid, but they cannot afford to purchase uh, insurance, health insurance. So she supports expanding Medicaid to provide everyone in Idaho with a primary care and coverage. And this is where her brilliance comes in. She says this will save Idaho and our local communities $34 million per year by avoiding the medical costs of uninsured patients. Funds that will reinvest back into our local hospitals and communities. Uh, Idaho deserves its own public medical school, she says. Economic development data from the Association of American Medical Colleges shows that each medical school established in a state creates $1 billion of, of economic impact in the state. Again, implementing something to help the people that helps the economy, not giving the money to big businesses, right? Um, so also protecting our lands. She says here in Idaho, our land is not only our heritage, but also the source of our livelihood. It serves as a valuable asset to our state, one that should be shared by everyone, not auctioned off to the wealthy individuals and big corporation for private use. She says on the top of her list of uh, concerns, combating climate change, uh, giving people a livable working wage, conservation and cleanup, embracing homegrown clean energy and internet equality. Right now in Idaho, 21% of Idahoans, uh, of Idaho is lacking sufficient connectivity. So she exports, uh, she, supports expanding broadband, broadband access to everyone. And, you know, it's a huge thing. When someone doesn't have access to the internet, they can't communicate. Uh, there are certain causes that wouldn't be able to be fought for if people didn't have access to the internet. There's so much uh, that could come. It's not just about chit-chatting with your friends. It improves people's lives. So there's a 21%, a sorry, 21% <laughs> of Idahoans do not have a proper access to the internet. So that is actually a huge deal. So let me just say real quick, and this is something that I'm working on now, but I don't know if you're aware that Donald Trump is now trying to take away uh, health care from Native Americans. And like I said, 
this is something I'm working on right now. I'm just grazing, grazing the surface, scratching the surface here. But uh, he's trying to call Native Americans no longer a sovereign people, but a race. And as a race, um, giving them health care would be favoring one race. So he's trying to take their health care away from them. And what that is from is he's implementing a new health care bill in certain states where he says people have to work to get health care. And uh, normally Native Americans would be exempt from that. And uh, he's saying they're not because he's renaming them as a race. So as to not favor a race, he says they're included in that they have to work to get health care in order to get health care. But I don't know if you know, there are, uh, it's minimal access to jobs for many people who live on reservations. And there are some reservations that are literally hours away from other communities and sources of work. And that also makes them hours away from being able to, you know, run businesses within their own communities and generate profit that way. So it's not, it's not like it is for me I live in the suburbs. I can go get a job anywhere. I can go get a job around the corner. It's not like that for a lot of uh, people who live on reservations. The, the jobs are literally hours away. So um, the Trump administration now appears to be on the move to bring an end to that century old struggle um, and they're talking about the struggle where America completely tries to screw over Native Americans and take away all of the promises that they made to them. Uh, moved to bring an end to that century-old struggle by committing a paper genocide. The phrase paper genocide is used when a culture is wiped from mass consciousness and visibility autonomy through tactics such as removing their ethnic designations from a national census, or in this case, having their sovereignty dismantled by the notion that Native America, um, Native America is a race and not a diverse sum of distinct cultures and subcultures of sovereign nations, tribes, and peoples. Trump slipped this into negotiations surrounding Indian health care a move that may very well breach the supremacy clause of the United States Constitution, which establishes that all treaties made under its authority constitute the supreme law of the land. And that was a piece from, I can't remember my source, but that's what I'm working on, that he is trying to just take away the, the last of Native American people's rights, the last of and destroy all the treaties that the United States had with them. And because this goes on to, to sort of get into that, the wording that he's placing on them now will also eventually make it so that he can take their land away from them. And we all know what happened or what's happening in um, Bears Ears and Grand Staircase, Staircase Escalante that they've reduced the size of the national monuments so that they could mine, um, so that they could drill, so that they can mine on sacred land that was their land, protected land, promised land. Trump wants to take away uh, any land that Native Americans have that is of use to him for mining, drilling, for fossil fuels. And that's really what this is about. So like I said, I'm just researching it now and uh, I'll, I'll do a piece on this when it's complete, but that is in the works right now. So anyways, back to the, the, the final thought, the good news. Um, Paulette Jordan is now running as a Democrat for uh, governor of Idaho, and she is incredible. So it is a, a, a very conservative state, but she, I really think she has a great chance.